Did 100 muscle ups for time in 13 minutes and five seconds. Check it out. Yo, this video I'm going to be talking for about 14 minutes straight. And that's going to be because I'm going to be talking about Taylor Self, Rich Froning, and Dre Strom doing 100 muscle ups for time. My challenge within talking for 14 minutes straight is that of course, I'm not gonna be able to break this thing up, which means that I'm going to be challenged to not be using repetitive words the way we're all, you know, pick on people sometimes. You may have seen the rug reviews where there might be some words such as like or um. So that's a challenge of mine in this video where I'm now watching Taylor Self do muscle ups where he is doing what appears to be four muscle ups every 30 seconds until he hits 100 consecutive ring muscle ups. Froning and Dre are doing them as well. Right before I cut into this video, you'll go over to the whiteboard and Rich has a bunch of fives on there. Doesn't want to lose track of where he's at and he has every intention of doing sets of five till he gets to 100, which what ends up being 20 sets of five. Yes, simple math tells me that. Goes on over, wipes it off. Taylor's got somebody over in the corner keeping track for him. That in and of itself, I think is a competitive advantage for Taylor as he's doing these 100 consecutive. He doesn't have to run over. Sure, he grabs chalk right there, but somebody is indeed telling him where he's at the whole time. When you're doing open workouts, yes, you got your judge there, but I do think that there is an advantage to having somebody telling you where you're at, what number you're at. All you've got to do is focus on your breathing, your positions, trying to make everything move as smooth and as easy as you can while still, of course, hitting the range of motion. But when you're doing something that's important, which when I watch this, I do think that Taylor has the wherewithal to know that Froning had done this workout in a certain amount of time. If you haven't seen these videos, I'm not gonna ruin it for you to tell you who finishes where, what happens at the end. It'll also incentivize you to watch the entire freaking thing. But you got Dre, who is also doing what appears that Taylor is doing. So four at a time, until they can't do four anymore. That is if that ever even happens, because Rich does seem that he thinks that he can just keep on doing sets of five until forever. Interesting thought process that I went through the other day. I was listening to Brian talk on Sevon's podcast, the Top 100 deal, and I just have these thoughts and I just kind of shout them out whenever I want because that's why I have my own YouTube channel. He kept on saying that the reason that Banderos wins the CrossFit Games, and I'm bringing this up because we've also got Froning here who has won consecutive CrossFit Games just as Medeiros has, just as Fraser has, and just as Toomey has. They all won consecutive CrossFit Games, correct? They're testing for the fittest on earth, and every year the question is, are the workouts good? Is the test good? And very often the response is, if the same person is winning year after year, Ketron's one consecutive, Andy's one multiple, you get it. If the same person wins every year and they're testing for the fittest on earth, then is it fair to say that the biggest reason that Medeiros continues to win is the fact that he doesn't make mistakes? Because when I hear mistakes, I think that he mitigates failure or that he is lucky. You never mess up, no mistakes are made. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you would say that somebody who does make multiple mistakes like Patrick Vellner is unlucky. You watch his plate roll across the gym at, or the Coliseum doing anus, anus, I just call it anus, the one with the freaking yoke and the pegboard with the bunch of thrusters to start it off. But you watch Fellner do that and he stays unlucky. He falls off the top of the cargo net and he's got internal bleeding and he always unlucky. So maybe he's unlucky, which is causing him to peak and win and mitigate failure or potential loss at the games. And Medeiros doesn't have that happen. Maybe you can attribute that to Adam Neifer, who is a team competitive coach. And when you've got the team head on your shoulders that someone like Neifer has, then you start to think maybe, and I was about to say reverse engineer, but the other day when I made that video where I was sitting over there on the bench giving my review, someone in the comments brought up the fact that I said reverse engineer. And I, as I was re-watching it, I think I said it four or five times, which right there means that you just gotta be cognizant of the word that you don't wanna repeat yourself saying. So if I'm not gonna say like a thousand times and I'm not gonna say the other one, uh, or um, a thousand times, you just have to remember that I'm trying to get better and fix my freaking speech. Frickin's a word that I will always use and so is the rock clip in the background. So, it doesn't matter. so if you don't like that, you're not gonna like my videos. This point in time, as I've been rambling, we're four minutes and 40 seconds into the workout. Taylor's at 40. 
I couldn't fucking tell you where Froning's at. So something that Taylor has here and has been working cool with is a videographer slash video editor. I haven't spoken with him. I don't know if he's doing this, if he is. I don't know shit about fuck. Freaking Godspeed, dude. That's awesome that you've put, that you figured out how to do that because stuff like this, I've figured out it ain't easy. He's still competing at a high level. You can see that with the way that he's going about these ring muscle ups. He's at 44, he's keeping his pace. He had knee surgery recently, which is what I think is the second or third iteration of that knee surgery. He had a bunch of shit in there. He had a surgery and they pulled a bunch of screws and crap out. And then he had what should put him into a good place for the, maybe not this year, but next season. Again, I'm speculating. But from what I do remember him saying, he will not be competing this year, but he has every intention of doing very well next year. He's still in great shape, and if he's also learning how to edit these videos, which he might just have an editor, he's putting out some content, he's got the YouTube channel, he's got the program, I made the Suck My Tiny Penis video, and from what I can see, everything and everyone really loves the workout. I repped my Suck My Tiny Penis hat the entire Wadapalooza weekend, thank you for the hat, Taylor. He's a good dude, he's crushing it from every single realm, maybe possible video editing. He just hit 50 muscle ups in six minutes and five seconds, putting him on pace for 12, which I suppose if you continuously do that for every 30 seconds, that puts you at 12, right? What does that end up being? This is all stuff that I should have done beforehand, but it puts you at 40 in five, and it puts you at, okay, so it would be somewhere around 13. 1240. I'll figure it out, I'll plug it in on the screen because I don't want to just sit here and ramble. I like to talk as I'm making these videos. Froning, if he keeps on doing those fives every single time until he can't do them any longer, I believe that that is actually, well, 20 sets. God, when I focus on talking, I can no longer focus on numbers as well. So just keep talking, Andrew, fill it up with words. Dre Strom is a CrossFit Games team champion. I believe the year that they first had super teams, him Froning, and China Cho and Tasia, China Cho, maybe that, I think that was it. They kind of just destroyed everybody. I remember the big team they were going up against was the Camille and Alex Smith team. And again, I could be wrong about that. This is just me trying to pull things out of my butt. But Dre Strom's a fucking monster. And I think he's also run something close to a four minute mile. So the dude, his body weight fluctuates quite a bit just depending on what he's got, but he also just recently did a competition where he had to do a 5K row. I saw he did that in the low 17 minute range, which just tells you that he's got a fucking motor. And you can also keep up with Froning on the gymnastics pieces like this. He's decently strong. You can see that in the games when he's doing that heavy front squat. Dude's a crazy good athlete. Right around here, as I was recording this to plug into this video, I noticed that they were talking to Tasia and Kristen Miller, who used to live by me. She used to go to an affiliate right next to me, and she's always been a freaking great athlete. Kristen Miller's the shit. Brother Eric Miller is very cool as well. I cut it because I got confused, but I do resync it up at the exact same time. You'll be able to see a clock in the Froning video, and then it will sync up at 829 on Taylor's along with the 831. See, there, there it is, it's jumping around, and I fucked this shit up. Where's the, where's the resync together? 829, and then I kinda, and then it pops right back up at 829, just so you know that these things are indeed synced right there. And then it should pan over, there you go, 831, 831, we're all good. Taylor just hit 69, one of my favorite numbers, 27's my favorite, 69's my second favorite number. Where was I with the whole fittest on earth conversation? Yes. If Medeiros is gonna win every year, and we're going to chalk it up to the fact that he doesn't make mistakes, when I hear that, it just makes me think that he's gotten lucky, and you can't really plan on not making mistakes. But if you are indeed the fittest on earth, and you were to do something as a mile run, go do a mile run, Andrew. Okay, what do you got? Andrew, what's your best mile run ever? 529, and you're not in great shape. What's your best mile right now? I could probably, if I sold my soul, do it under six minutes right now. Okay, that's how fit you are in the mile and just the mile. Then, Andrew, I need you to go do 100 muscle ups for time with Froning, Taylor, and Dre. I don't think that there's any chance in hell that I'm able to keep up with these guys because, as I've stated, I'm a little bit heavier right now. When I was able to do stuff like this, and I've done 200 muscle ups for time, I was under 190 pounds. I woke up this morning at 207 pounds. So I'm a basically wearing a weighted vest. 
And when I did those 200 muscles for time, I'll let you know that elbow and hands were not feeling very good. It was by the beginning of the end with the elbow and the freaking extra body weight when I did stuff such as that 25 unbroken the other day, my lifetime best is 35. So right off the top, you can say that's about 85% of my best ever set. I have no intention and don't think that I'd be able to do this in the time domain that these guys are doing it slash their mile runs are also better and there's not gonna be an element of luck in there. I'm not gonna luckily or not make a mistake and be able to wiggle my way into a time frame where I can compete with these guys with that and that. Throw in a one rep deadlift, sure, I'll compete with them. But over the course of a CrossFit Games weekend, which is 13 to 15 events, there's gonna be things where sure, maybe you mess up a bit and fall down the leaderboard a little bit. And I always look at that as, with the exception of possibly the single unders where it did pluck people such as Tia and Fakowski out because they missed a single under and now they're not able to continue on and they lose a bunch of spots. You can say that that's not making a mistake, but also if you are somebody who is the world-class best single under on the planet, it's an element of fitness that if you practiced, it's the saying which is luck is worse, preparation meets opportunity and a mistake is when you aren't prepared. So that's kind of where I figured all that stuff out. If, for any example, I were to be rewind three years and 100 ring muscle-ups were to come up and it was gonna be the only workout at the CrossFit Games, I'd have a chance at winning the CrossFit Games. If it was just one event and it was just that workout and I was 187 pounds like I was at that point, 20 pounds lighter, if it were to come up now, I would no longer have it because I don't have the fitness to do it where preparation meets opportunity. Froning and Dre and Taylor, Maderos, Tia, Matt, everyone who's ever won every single year, they are always the most lucky because they have prepared and they have had the opportunity to express it at the CrossFit Games. And I don't really know how a 100 muscle ups for time video turned into me talking about this, but Taylor is yes, a very fit person. And of these muscle ups, it looks like he is, this is, yep, right there. This is what I thought was crazy. He did sets of four all the way until he got to 96, and then he missed his 96th ring muscle up. I couldn't, which tells you that he paced it perfectly for where he's at, meaning it's not so much that he wasn't lucky, it's that he maybe wasn't prepared enough, he was taking a risk, he knew he was right there, he wanted to stop the timer, it's a competitive thing that someone like him has. He's got that, like, let's go, get in there, fucking kill it. That's why Taylor's a good dude. That's why it's gonna be cool to watch him once he is able to compete again. Just see how that knee heals up. He's at 98. I don't, again, don't know where Froning is. He's just got rage face, trying to finish up those muscle ups. But the gist of the entire video is that I think that it's the test of the fittest on earth. And I think that it's kind of, Unfair to say that Madero's, Froning, Frazier just don't make mistakes because Frazier clearly was dominating everybody. Froning, everyone can say that he was able to watch the field and play the field. Taylor wins. I think his time was 13.12, by the way. Froning, his time, 13.20. I plug it in somewhere. So Taylor, although it doesn't look quite right, was it 13.02? So 18 second difference right there. Uh, Taylor Self for the win over Rich Froning, Dre Strom. Sorry, man, I didn't keep you going in there, but he finishes somewhere. He had 20 left when Froning was done. I'll tell you that much. That's what I remember from having watched the clip. The thing that I've always thought was coolest about the CrossFit games and CrossFit as a methodology for finding the fittest on earth is that if you were to have a school teacher and you were to have a school teacher who did CrossFit and did it religiously and took it seriously and was say a competitor of some sorts, or maybe even just competitive within their gym, that teacher is the fittest teacher in the school. So long as nobody at that school also did the same thing and was going to be doing similar workouts to them where they were comparing each other. If you're taking that CrossFitter versus the teacher who was a strict old power lifter or a gymnast or a distance runner or a swimmer, triathlete, whatever, the CrossFit teacher was the fittest teacher at that school. Now let's say every single teacher was a CrossFit Games athlete. Let's just say the entire men's field was teachers. Justin Medeiros was the math teacher and Froning was the science teacher. Fikowski was the teacher of everything because he knows it all. And at the end of the day, you're trying to find the fittest teacher of them, you send them to the CrossFit Games. Medeiros comes out on top, 
It's because he was the most prepared for the opportunity where they were the teachers at that school who were being put through the test that was for the fittest on earth. It wasn't that he, the teacher, was making the least mistakes to get to that position. It's that he is just the fittest. The same way where as if you were your average everyday teacher amongst all of your associates, teachers conference, everybody in the room, everybody go do 100 burpees right now. I would take the CrossFit teacher over every single one of the other teachers on burpees, of course. But if you were to put them through 15 other tests, whatever it might be, hey, teachers, all of you, go do a one rep bench press. Now do a squat. But wait a minute, now go run a mile. And then all of a sudden you've got four tests. The weightlifters win the weightlifting, the runners win the running. The CrossFitter probably did pretty well in all of them. And you could say that that is them not having made mistakes, but it's also where their preparation has met the opportunity to be proven to be the fittest teacher in that school. Anyway, Taylor Self, nice job beating the four-time fittest, not luckiest man on earth, Rich Froning, and Riller, out.